How's everyone doing today? So, in today's video, we're going to go hang out with Jeff Burdick and discuss what safety gear you should have with you when fishing big water like Lake Erie from a kayak. So stay tuned. How's everyone doing today? Chuck Earls here. I'm here with Jeff Burdick. We're hey guys. just going to uh, go over some of the safety gear. And I figured what better to do it than with Jeff because, I mean, he carries absolutely everything that you could think of to be safe on the water, especially big water. Yeah, hey guys, uh, Jeff Burdick here. Um, Chuck and I had got this idea actually, uh, gosh, probably two months ago uh, to go over a breakdown of, of some of the safety stuff out there because more and more of us are uh, thinking about hitting the bigger water, hitting Lake Erie, or already out on, on the lake and, and maybe not having sufficient equipment. Um, there's no right or wrong. Um, I actually, I'll go over some stuff here in a minute uh, of what the, the Coast Guard actually uh, requires. Uh, being on a, a Coast Guard auxiliarist, uh, doing vessel safety checks. I, I've got an actual vessel safety check form that we uh, we use for doing a, a vessel safety check on a kayak. And what we required as a kayaker is, is pretty minimal. But we may not want to be at the minimum side of this. So as you see on the table here, I, I've got quite a bit of stuff laid out. I've got some other stuff laid out behind us off, over there on my kayak as well. Of course, first and foremost, you get on the water is your PFD, um, whether it be an inflatable or a traditional. Get one, and, and when I say get one, don't just go to your Walmart and buy a, a twenty dollar PFD. This is my NRS Chinook. I love this thing personally because of the way it's made. It's comfortable. It's cut higher in the back, so when you're sitting in the seat, it's not bulky. Where your traditional life jacket may go down farther. And it's nice to have that comfort level. If it's comfortable, you're more apt to leave it on. A lot of people I talk to about wearing their PFD when they're on the water, so why don't you have it on? Oh, it's uncomfortable. You know, then get a good one. That thing could save your life one day. And uh, it's, it's not going to save your life tucked away down inside. And, and I know it's not required to have it on. You have to have it with you. Just try sometime to put that on when you're already in the water. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Uh, I always recommend if you're out on the water, it should be on yourself, especially in the you know canoes, kayaks, stand-up paddle boards, etc. It's it's just so hard when you're you're already submerged in the water with basically your head out of the water to try and put something that floats on to get underwater to get under your body when you're trying to force it down in. So it's just a recommendation of mine. Everybody can do their own thing, of course. Uh, also, Chuck just grabbed the, the inflatable. That's another option. Uh, it's a good option. This one happens to be a manual or automatic, so if it gets wet, there's a sensor that as it gets wet, it will cause it to, to inflate. Also, there's a, there's a cord, pull it, it's gonna inflate. A lot less weight, not as much bulk. End result, still gonna work. Also has a manual inflate tube so you can blow it up manually. So there's you know another option uh, for being out there on the water. Uh, with that, uh, just some other things here that I have. Uh, of course, when you're hitting the big water, uh, this is actually a requirement. Um, is the uh, distress light. I carry this in a bag. Uh, a lot of my stuff I'll drop in a bag and, and carry with me. Um, some flares. Uh, just your standard handheld flares. Now this is a requirement, especially at night. I carry them. I don't like them on the kayak. So that's where this comes in at. 
This is one of the new electronic ones. Battery powered, turn it on, it's gonna cycle through, and then that's gonna flash. So what's nice about this is you've got no burning device like you have here that you're lighting in a plastic boat. <laughs> we all know what hot stuff does to plastic. So that's why I went with this. It's just another option. Uh, I also carry this uh, from my kayak to my boat because I also have a boat as well. So I carry both. A uh, couple other things we have here. I think a lot of us remember last summer's uh, incident with Mark. Yeah, we'll call that an incident. <laughs> a little build pump. It's just a push-pull stroke pump. Gets rid of that excess water. Whether, whether you're on a sit-inside kayak or a sit-on-top kayak, just because you're on a sit-on-top, don't think that you don't need one of these. Those can crack, they can fill up with water, and if you're a mile, two miles offshore, you're not gonna get back before your kayak hits the bottom of the lake. That's right. So keep that in mind. That's right. Uh, a couple other things I, I always carry. This is always around my neck. Sound producing device. Again, this is a requirement. They put this around, put, as soon as I get on the water, boom, that's where she sits. Always with me. I also carry a small uh, little air horn. Take that. I'll drop that in my bag or in my vest. Uh, that's what's nice about that NRS vest is it's got lots of pockets. This is great to drop it right inside of a pocket. I have it right there with me all the time. So I have that as, a, as an option. Again, this isn't necessary. This is a huge require, er, a recommendation of mine. I think Chuck will agree. Absolutely. Um, a lot of people say, oh, I have my cell phone. You know, VHF radio, waterproof floats. This one doesn't have the DSC function, which a lot of the new ones have, but I have that covered in something else I'll show you next. So I'll carry this with me out there. Uh, again, this clips right on my vest. I turn it on when I get on the water. I turn it off when I come back in. I can stay in touch with other kayakers. We'll talk back and forth. I can get in touch with another boat if I need to, need to. even the Coast Guard if I really need to. Even though it's a handheld and you're limited on range, uh, again, it's clips right on my vest. I turn it on when I get on the water. I turn it off when I come back in. I can stay in touch with other kayakers. We'll talk back and forth. I can get in touch with another boat if I need to, need to, even the Coast Guard if I really need to. Even though it's a handheld and you're limited on range, a boat that the antenna is you know, eight, 10 feet off the water is one thing, those Coast Guard uh, stations, their antennas are up quite a ways. It's surprising. They will hear me quite a ways away on, on this handheld. And one thing I wanted to mention was when you're buying a VHF radio, make sure that you're okay with the size because some of them are, are quite big. So are you going to wear it on your PFD? Because the most important thing, if you get separated from your kayak and your radio is on your kayak, you're still out of luck. Yep. So yep. strap it to you wear it that way worst case scenario if you do go over and it's rough and you get separated you still have a contact device that way you get rescued absolutely that's a that's a great point and, and i usually put mine that actually goes uh, on my strap on my on my left my life vest right here on my shoulder i can even respond to a, a another person's right call here, right right here. Right here. actually right here I'll, I'll strap that right here i can reach up hit the mic call out without even taking it off of my vest. And also with the lanyard, I usually have it connected here as well. So if it does separate, it's not gonna leave me. It's always gonna be with me. And you see how that's out of the way, lightweight. It's not pulling down one side or the other. Correct. So keep that in mind. The DSC radios are nice, mm -hmm. but they're two or three times the size. Right. So most of those, it's not really comfortable to wear. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. Correct. Now, with that, we mentioned the DSC. What I did is I added the, the uh, this is a Rescue Link PLB that goes to satellites, unlike the radio that's on radio waves. So, this is going to send a signal out so far. This is going up in the air. This is going to that satellite, and it's going to keep sending that signal until I turn it off. And I'm not going to turn it off until I'm in somebody's boat. Uh, Personal locating beacon. If I activate this, that will continuously put out a signal. 
and I believe that turns on automatically if you do go in the water. Uh, they some do. This one, this one personally doesn't. Okay. But some do. This one, I actually have to open it up, turn on the, you know, open the antenna, and then turn it on to activate it. But then it's going to send out a signal, and Coast Guard's going to get that signal, and they're going to continue to get that signal and know exactly where I am. Where the radio is going to get you close, especially if you call in. Like I've got a, another piece of safety equipment I carry with me is my my second uh, GPS. This is just my handheld. Unit. I also have GPS in my fish finder, so I can call Coast Guard and say, hey, this is where I'm at. If I don't know where I'm at, this is going to tell exactly where I'm at. They're going to know where I'm at with this, and, and no questions asked with that one. And they know that that's registered to me. Um, I, I got a little bit of a discussion with them because I registered it per my boat. So if it goes off, they may be looking for a boat. I have to make sure I let them know that I'm not in my boat, I'm in my kayak. So you have to watch that if you use it in multiple places. You know, if you if you're bouncing from a boat to a kayak, then, then they're aware of that. A uh, couple other things here uh, we're going to go over that I also carry is this little light. It's what they call sea stroke. It's actually water activated, so if it gets wet, it's going to come on. Comes on, you get a just a nice flash. Um, also, another is a steady, and then the SOS and that gets a lanyard as well so you're again that's attached that's probably another thing I should mention to anything that you're kayaking if you don't want to lose it attach a float to it or attach it to a lanyard because it's if it's gonna go it's gonna go well, one thing to keep in mind if you are using floats on your rods and your accessories when you do go over just realize that now you have to capture all that gear that's floating around or floating away if you Tether it to the back of the boat somewhere. If you go over, at least it's attached. But of course, that brings another thing. Anything tethered, always carry a knife with you, just in case. If you get tangled, <laughs> always you can cut that, especially your paddle leash, because you always want a paddle leash. Yep. You don't want to lose the motor out of your car. That's what motor mounts are for. So use a paddle leash to keep your, propul your propulsion system with you. Correct. Um, Another thing, uh, just just again, this is a little, probably a little overkill for what most people think. Uh, signal mirror. If you need to signal somebody, this will signal to either a boat, another kayaker, aircraft. If if aircraft is looking for you, uh, just another piece of the puzzle. It's got a whistle attached to it and a float, so it's always going to be there. I usually keep that in, in, again in, in my bag that I have. Everything's right there at the ready. Now at night, comes on some different uh, circumstances. Flashlight. This one's multi-intensity, uh, plus a strobe, uh, plus an SOS. It's another nice thing to have with us to carry out there in the water. Again at night is the headlamp. I carry the headlamp, it's, it's on my head. It's nice to have to see what you're doing. And of all things that a lot of people don't think about, a simple watch. It's just a simple watch to have because if something happens, you end up in the water, you know what time it is, you know what time you called for help, and you can keep track of that on, hey, it's been an hour, where is everybody? And if you need to contact somebody again, you know, maybe they're searching for you, you can't see them, get back in touch. And this is something I, I completely forgot about when I had talked to Chuck before. It's just a basic first aid kit. Just a, some basic stuff in here. Band-Aids, aspirin, some uh, antiseptic wipes, piece of gauze. Just something nice to have because you never know when that fish hook's going to get in you. Or you're going to cut yourself or somebody else. Another nice thing to have. And this is another item I carry at night. It's a simple glow stick. Everybody's seen them use in this door. You break them, shake them. They'll glow. They'll glow for a long time. Nice to have that. It's actually got the little necklace that you can put on it. Put that around your neck. You've got another light. Somebody can find you when you're out there on, at night. 
Yes, they need to. Especially if you're floating around in the water. You can pick that up if you need to and wave it. People are going to see it. That's the big thing about the lights after dark. If you've never been on Lake Erie after dark, I don't recommend you do it for the first time by yourself. Go with somebody that's been experienced, somebody that's comfortable being out there after dark. I don't have a problem being on the water after dark. Somebody else might. You've got to be prepared. I've got my kayak set up with lights. I've got a 360 white uh, stern light. So I'm ready to go out there after dark. I've got, you know, you see what I carry with me. I have no problem being out there after dark. You have to be aware of your surroundings. The GPS fish finder is a great thing to have after dark. Because when you're out there, you look one way, oh, there's the shore, there's the lights. You look the other way, there's nothing. It's pitch black. And even when you're out there and you, and you think, oh, I know where I'm at, I know where I need to go back at, all those lights start to look the same after a couple hours. And, and with that GPS, and if you've, you mark the waypoint where you started or you have a track back feature on your, on your fish finder GPS, you go back and you can follow that line right back to where you launched at. Uh, I can remember a story of the first time I had a buddy of mine out. He's like, where do we go back at? And I told him, I said, there's a radio beacon here and there's a radio beacon there. And see that white light in the middle? He goes, yeah. I said, head for that white light. And sure enough, boom, we we're land on the beach we left from. And he goes, how did you know that? And I said, a piece of equipment right in front of me. He didn't have the GPS feature. So that's another nice thing to have. Even uh, during the day, there's times where Lake Erie can get extremely foggy, where you may have less than a quarter mile visibility. So... Obviously, you're not going to be able to see the shore. You're not going to know your direction without having some kind of a compass or a GPS system. So very, very important. Don't go out there without it. Yep. At least go with somebody that has one. Yeah, and you just mentioned something I completely forgot about, but it is on the kayak, is a compass. Mm -hmm. All I bought was a, a round, it's maybe an inch and a half, half round compass, uh, like 3M tape on one side. It sits right in my, on my center console on my kayak. So I know which direction I'm going. And you know, Lake Erie, around here, south is gonna get you to shore eventually. It may not be where you wanna be, right? but sometimes shore is more important than where you're actually launched from. So that, that's a nice thing to have as well. Uh, another thing here that I, I grabbed a couple uh, pieces of paper, well, I've got a couple papers here, some pamphlets, but we've got these stickers. This is something that we, we actually pass out at the, uh, with the Coast Guard Auxiliary. Those should be on your kayak. These are if found um, contact stickers. And these are nice to, to put on. You know, you're going to have your name and your phone number. And just stick it on a hatch or inside of a compartment. Because if something happens and, and you become separated with your kayak, but your buddies picked you up but couldn't get to your kayak, and you're on shore safe, and then somebody sees this empty kayak, and they're going to call the Coast Guard. And they're going to be looking for a body when you're you're down at, at Applebee's having a drink because you just got you know oh my gosh I almost died out there. Meanwhile, there's you know multi agencies out there looking for you. They see this inside your kayak. They're going to call you. Right. Hey, you okay? Oh yeah, I'm okay. You know, oh shoot, I forgot. You know, or, you know, or or if you know, especially the people that may live along a body of water, the wind blows that into the water. They find it a kayak up against a. A, a river bank or something they know who to call it in, whose it is and make sure that they're safe and that they don't have to, to get that rescue going and, and try and find an actual person uh, also there's some some rules of the road these are just your basic rules of the road you know port starboard you know where to go where to stay away from uh, and there's some some paddle safety uh, checklist and I'm going to have all this stuff with me so if anybody you know needs some wants some I can get them to you I'm, I'm going to start now that, that the nice weather's coming uh, I'll be carrying a lot of this stuff in my truck at all times uh, I never know when I'm going to get somebody who wants a, a vessel safety check and, and I'll have that stuff with me uh, so if you want something you can shoot me a message on Facebook or, or whichever however you want to get a hold of me get a hold of Chuck I'll make sure I have this stuff here if anybody wants any of that uh, that literature. So, so it's all good to have.
Another thing that, uh, that I wanted to touch on was a safety flag. <clears throat> so there's a couple different types of safety flags. Um, there's the, just the standard orange ones that they're selling everybody. Um, I'll tell you what, when you get out on the water, you lose that orange flag as, almost as quickly as you lose the sight of the kayak. Mm -hmm. So like Jeff has this one that uh, one of his friend's mothers custom made for him. See, it's got the orange, it's got the yellow, the chartreuse. Or my buddy makes these, which is what I use on the water. Super bright. It does actually open up and act as a windsock without having any resistance, so the flag stays out and flickers. Um, most important thing is to be able to see, be able to be seen by the passing boats and ships. I mean, we're we're out there with, you know, anything from small 14 footers to big massive freight liners, and if they don't see you there's a chance that you're probably gonna get ran over. So, stay safe. Keep, keep your head on a swivel when you're out there. Don't expect that that boat you see sees you. And so if you see a boat coming, don't expect he's gonna see you. Even though the rules of the road state that you might have the right of way, you know, I'm gonna be moving. Uh, especially any of you guys at Fish Cleveland area, you see one of those big ore boats come in, don't even get close to him. Right. Not only because he may not see you, he's not going to be able to turn away from you. And the propulsion of those ships creates a heck of a lot of turbulence. You want to make sure you stay away from that. Especially if you're in a river, don't get it close to him. That turbulence will get you and push these little kayaks real quick and you don't want to get pinned up against something or possibly capsized at that point so sometimes you gotta go against what you may think is right and just do what's right for you and be safe and, and just move out of the way uh, boats exactly. doesn't matter I mean just especially out on the open water you know keep your eye out or, or should say I do like to say don't go alone buddy systems are great um, we're all keep, we're all guilty of going by ourselves. We've all done it. If you if you're gonna go alone, at least leave a float plan. Yep. Um, the Coast Guard actually has a really nice one that you can fill out and send to a family member, mm -hmm. just so somebody knows where you're at and what time you're expected to be back. You know, because if you don't show up at eight o'clock and you're floating, they know to call for help or call you first or call you first. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Um, and, and a float plan doesn't have to be really elaborate. It can be, you know, letting your wife know, hey, we're going out of, uh, we'll just say Avon Lake. Mm -hmm. There's three of us going out of Avon Lake. We're going to launch at 6 a.m. We should be back by noon. And if you're not back by noon, one o'clock, maybe she's going to start to be concerned and call you. Or especially if you're going out at night, let somebody know where you're going to launch from, if you're going by yourself or with a group. And, and just make sure that somebody knows where you're at, what your intentions are, start times, end times, etc. It's always nice to have that. And even if you're early, hey, early is better than late. But if you're late, people tend to start to worry, and rightfully so. Uh, knock on wood, I haven't heard of anybody lately that has had any issues with kayaks. Um, but there was a couple incidences a couple years ago up around the islands. Uh, early season, uh, capsized, separated, unfortunately didn't make it. Uh, but that also brings up something Chuck and I were going to touch on too is cold weather, having the proper equipment. Uh, dry suits are probably the best thing to have. Of course there's dry suits, wet suits, anti-exposure suits. Some guys do the, the, the chest waders. If you're going to do the chest waders, I stress on a, a belt at the waist to help slow down that water from getting into your legs. But uh, And hopefully a dry top with that. Um, there was a yes. guy that just did a video and tested the dry suits, uh, chest waders with a dry top, and just the chest waders. And when he went in just with the chest waders, he was getting enough water to make it dangerous getting back to the launch. Yep. You know, it's not a fact of getting back in your boat. You don't want to be halfway to the launch, become hypothermic, mm -hmm. and then be in danger. Correct. So it's it's worth the investment. I know they're expensive, but 
How valuable is your life? What's your life worth? Mm -hmm. That's what you gotta ask yourself. At the end of the day, if you don't come home, how's it gonna affect your family? How's it gonna affect your children? Because you can't really put a price on that. that that's exactly it. That's everything you see sitting on a table in front of me. That's why I have a lot of what I have is because I wanna come home. If I get separated, if I end up in the water, if I break down or, or something happens, I want somebody to find me because this this three hundred dollars for this PLB is nothing compared to what I'm worth. Now, one thing I want to mention about this PLB, this company, if you use it, if you get you know you get stranded, you have to be rescued, and you use this, they will replace it for free. Yes, they will. So you're not you know don't be afraid to use it. If you use it, they're more than happy to replace it for free. Yep. So this is one one thing that you have to buy should last you for a very long time. Mm -hmm. If everything goes right, I'll never have to activate that piece of equipment. But if I do, I know I'm gonna get found and ACR is gonna say, hey, our stuff works, here's another one. Yep. And, and that's great. The only thing I do recommend is, is if you're out there and, and you're not in dire need, you know, they say don't use it, but if it's life-threatening, use it. By all means. When all else is, is not working, you know, your radio is not working, you can't get contact, or Correct. it gets real bad, you look at the navigation and all of a sudden you're 10, 20 miles offshore, mm -hmm. you know. If you know you're not going to get back or, you know, you, you make calls on, on the VHF, no responses, and you need help, grab that. Grab that and go. It's better to be, it's better to be safe than, than sorry. and. and you're not going to need them if, if it was minor. I mean, it's, it's pretty serious if you have to call them. So They just want to make sure that you're alive and well. At the end of the day, safety is, is number one with those boys. And uh, they do a lot of training. They're prepared for it. So uh, we're actually hoping, I'm, I'm going to throw this in here too as well. Um, I threw this out last summer, late last summer. We're, we're hoping to get a bunch of us uh, together this year and actually do a training exercise with the Coast Guard. Uh, on with us in kayaks because they know what to go look for in a boat every day yeah they don't do that with kayaks and, and I'm hoping we can still get that to to work through this year and uh, and do some training exercises with kayaks so we're uh, actually the flotilla I'm involved with in Lorraine there's two of us right now we're looking at getting our kayaks involved as facilities um, with the Coast Guard auxiliary uh, it's a pretty uh, intense process. It was more than both of us expected, uh, but uh, we're still pursuing that. Uh, I'm not sure how quickly we'll be able to get it done, if we'll be able to get it done this year or not. But uh, it's a lot of information here. Uh, when you watch the video, if you, if you have questions, by all means, get a hold of Chuck or myself, and we'll try and answer what we can, because I know we kind of went through this pretty quickly, but uh, it's a lot of good stuff to have. Um, of course, there's a lot of this stuff is just recommendations, but uh, it's all good stuff to have, especially if you're going out on, on the big lake. If, if you're going to be in rivers, uh, inland lakes, of course, inland lakes are, are a lot different. Um, we're talking, you could be in a lake that probably the roughest wave you're going to have is a boat wake to Lake Erie that, as many guys know, can go from flat when you launch to three hours later, there's four, four foot waves out there. And, You've got to be prepared for that, and uh, not only physically but also mentally. Um, you the, can't you can't panic. No. You just have to kind of put your head down and, and push through. Yep. Even if you're even if it hurts, even if you get tired, and that's another thing that I wanted to touch on. Every time I go offshore, I carry with me um, at least ten ounces of beef jerky. You know, I try to buy the biggest bag I can, some other snacks, and plenty of water. You never know when you're out there, you start feeling weak. Well, you know, if you're three, three miles offshore, it takes a lot of energy to paddle back, especially when the wind picks up and you're paddling against three footers. So a little bit extra food, a little bit extra water. Um, not to mention, if you do get lost at sea, at least you have something, you know, to eat, to kind of help you last a little bit longer. So just throw a pack of beef jerky in there, a couple bottles of water, Maybe a, a camel pack. Yep. Hydration is, is huge. It's it's amazing how quickly 
you will become dehydrated if you go out on the water and don't drink something. Uh, water, of course, is always best. Uh, you know, alcohol, eh. Uh, I've always been against alcohol and water, whether it be a kayak or a boat. Um, but water is the best thing to have, and, and you've got to make sure you stop and drink it. Um, you just, you've got to keep those fluids in you. you. You're out there paddling, even if you're not paddling, you're just, you know, say you're out, you know, just drifting along fishing, you're still going to sweat. You're still going to start to lose some of that. So you've got to make sure you stay hydrated. And, you know, if you don't want to carry water, um, at least get one of those life straws. So worst case scenario, if you're out there for 10, 12, 14 hours floating around waiting to be rescued, at least you can drink Lake Erie's water and have some kind of filtration system so it's not going to cause diarrhea or make you sick. Yep. So even Definitely. just a little life straw, it's about, I don't know about that big, real small, you can stuff, stuff it in a compartment or anything. So if you, if you refuse to carry water, at least keep one of those with you. For sure. I think we covered everything here, Chuck. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I hope this helps some, some folks. Uh, it gives them a little idea of how crazy I am with how much stuff I carry. <laughs> but what's, what's nice is this looks like a lot of stuff, but everybody else says, oh, there's so much weight. This doesn't weigh that much. I can put most of this stuff in. Uh, I've got a small bag here. Uh, I put most of this stuff that we have here right inside this bag. And this bag will go, usually I lay it in the back deck of my kayak. It's, it's waterproof. I actually latch it right to one of my lashing straps. So it's not going anywhere with my kayak. So what I don't have on me is in this. And like I say, it's not a lot of weight. I mean, we're only looking at a couple pounds here. We've got probably a couple boxes of lures weighs more than what this does when it's full. So uh, I think that's all I've got uh, on my end. If Chuck's got anything else. Well, the, the other thing that I wanted to touch on, um, because one of the biggest things, you know, especially like my dry suit, I mean, I spent almost $700 on my dry suit. Um, they're not cheap, but I'll tell you what, it will save your life. And I've only been off the water. I've only been um, frozen out one month this year. So all those other times, 11 months out of the year, I was on the water because I had my dry suit. I had the proper under layers because the dry suit will keep you dry. It won't keep you warm. So under layers is very important. Um, the other thing, the, you know, your personal locator beacon, your PLB, this thing, I mean, it's 250 or 300 bucks, but this will save your life. Whether you're on the kayak, whether you're hiking or camping or ice fishing. If you're ice fishing off of Lake Erie and the, the ice shelf blows away and they have to come rescue you, they can find you with this. Mm -hmm. So it is a little bit of money, but make the sacrifice and protect your life. Yep. What's nice is you, you mentioned the cost. The bag I just had, the PLB, the sea strobe, the signal mirror, all that in a kit for, I think it was like 349. Yeah. I found it, it was on sale, I think at West Marine. Um, you can watch Amazon or have them come up. A lot of this stuff is, is it's a cost, but it's all worth it Yeah. at the end of the day. Uh, Think of it as a life insurance policy. Yep, Ex exactly. And, and I'll say this is don't, don't look at it as, oh, it's never going to happen to me. Yeah. It could. Uh, I've been kayaking now uh, nine years. Ten year, this would be my tenth year. Um, I've had a couple close calls out on the water. Uh, never had a capsizing yet, and I say yet because it's not a matter of when. It's just it's not if it happens, it's when it happens. It's going to happen one day. I'm I'm going to do it. It's just it's just a fact of life. It's it's going to happen. You've got to be prepared for that. And uh, like Chuck, Chuck mentioned a little bit ago, just have to stay calm. Something happens. Uh, don't panic. Don't panic. Take the, take a deep breath. Relax. Calm yourself down. Assess your situation, and then figure out what I need to do next. And and be very methodical on how you you do things. And don't just rush into it and expend a lot of energy. Think about what you need to do. And if you end up outside of your boat, but your boat's still there, try and get back in that kayak. 
It's not the easiest thing, and that's going to come up to another video once the weather gets nice. <laughs> yeah, Exiting and re-entry of kayaks. So Re-entry is, is very important to practice. Um, one of our buddies, Mark Adam, uh, anytime we go fishing with him, you can bet money that he's going swimming because he loves to practice and practice and practice because you know when you need it, it's like second nature because mm -hmm. you've done it a thousand times. It, so it, It's not uncommon for Mark to go out there in a 35 degree water temp and do it <laughs> or if he's out there in the summertime and do it. Right. He'll, he'll just stop, jump over, you roll that kayak right over to the side, swim a little bit, climb back in his kayak. Yep. He's a... Uh, He's another great guy full of information with safety stuff. So, And that's one thing that I wanted to touch on. Anytime that I have a safety question, um, Jeff is always my go-to because I, I trust his opinion and I, I feel that he's one of the safest people on the water and that's how I'm trying to be. So, you know, um, take it as, as you want, but this stuff is very important and at the end of the day, it could be a difference between life or death. Absolutely. So, great. All right, thanks guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate yeah. it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, definitely comment below, suggestions, questions, anything you need. If you want one of those stickers, we can arrange that. Yep. All right, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you on the next video. You bet, thanks guys.